You're listening to the Face Valley Podcast. I'm your host, Vinnie Wellsby. Episode 127. Funny ways I used to try and disguise my fatness. Let's do it. I'm Victoria Wellsby, TEDx speaker, best-selling author and fat activist. I have transformed my life from hating my body with desperately low self-esteem to being a courageous and confident fierce fatty who loves every inch of this jelly. Society teaches us living in a fat body is bad, but what if we spent less time, money and energy on the pursuit of thinness? and instead focused on the things that actually matter, like if pineapple on pizza should be outlawed, or if the mullet was the greatest haircut of the 20th century. So, how do you stop negative beliefs about your fat body controlling your life? It's the Fierce Fatty Podcast. Let's begin. Hey, sweaty tits, how are ya? Or if you don't have tits, hey, sweaty nipples. Oh, and if you don't have nipples, hey, sweaty, just hey, sweaty. If you don't have sweat glands, hey, not sweaty. How you doing? How you doing? How's the life? Uh, sorry, you were you were missing an episode last week. Uh, I've been super duper busy with consulting stuff. Um, Consulting with companies and individuals and dietitians and it's all great, it's all good, but you know what? I was just too busy to do a podcast episode, which is not like me. Um, and I always think, like, who's listening anyway? So <laughs> is it, it doesn't want anyone notice. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I think someone will notice and be like, oh, I thought there was an episode today. Where is it? I don't know. I get like that sometimes with my podcasts if they don't if they don't release an episode. But it take me maybe like two or three weeks before they realise I haven't released an episode, and then I'll be like, "Where the fuck?" Maybe I should do that just to just to um, I don't know, give myself a break because maybe it's okay if I don't do an episode every week. I don't know. Um, yeah, and people do listen to the show. <laughs> I keep going. Oh, it's only my mum that listens. Not even my mum because she doesn't listen to podcasts. But people do listen to the show. Uh, <laughs> so, welcome to this episode. Hey, I uh, I thought of something, and um, thanks to one of the listeners who emailed me and said that they had listened to, I guess it was the last last episode about um, weight loss surgery stories part two. And they said, oh, if you're ever going to do a part three, uh, I've got a story. And I thought, you know what? Anytime I, op- anytime I share anything about uh, bariatric surgery, there's always so many stories. And they deserve to be heard. And a lot of times people have never had a place to share the stories. And so what I've done is I've created a uh, a Google form. Um, the link will be in the show notes. The show notes are at fiercefatty.com forward slash one, two, seven, forward slash one, two, seven. If you forget that forward slash podcast. Um, and there's a link there for you to, if you want to, if you've had stomach amputation surgery, bariatric surgery, quote, weight loss surgery, if you're thinking about having it, if a loved one had it and you have a story to tell, then um, you can go fill out this survey. I mean, it's like, you know, there's kind of like standards like uh, where, where are you, what's your name and things like that. Um, and then I thought, you know what, it'd be really good if we get a lot of responses to have kind of like data of uh where did you have surgery what type of surgery how old were you when you had the surgery what was your life before and after what made you have the surgery did you lose weight how long did you lose weight for did you gain weight um and so all of the questions are apart from uh one or two you can choose to to answer them basically your name you can choose to be anonymous and do you agree for the information um, to be shared on the podcast or whatever, or I don't know, some other way that I might share it? 
Um, and you can choose just to share your story just so that I read it, or you can choose to share your story so others can read it. Um, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Because you know what, there's, uh, it's making me think there's not a lot of, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a sociologist. I have a degree, it's in illustration, so <laughs> totally unrelated to this stuff. But I think this um, collecting stories is, apart from that one um, study that I shared, you know, literally it was just collecting stories and it was kind of like a limited number of people because it's hard, right? Uh, if you don't, if you don't have a social media presence like I do, it's hard to collect people. Like if you were just to go out on the street and be like, hey, who's had surgery? This surgery, not a lot of people are gonna say, but because I have a lot of people in my audience who might have, then it's easier for me to collect this evidence. And who knows, you know, maybe no one will, maybe no one will respond to this survey <laughs> because people are like, ah, oh, I'm bored of it. I don't wanna share my story. Or maybe you do, um, and uh, minimum I will maybe um, make a, another episode like part three, or I was thinking maybe I can make it into like a big blog post or a, a book or something. It needs to be where we can get keep all these stories, right? Because we've already got a few hours of stories and you know, because the more information out there that is not pro bariatric surgery, I think it's going to balance it out a little bit. It'll be like a drop in the ocean, but you never know. It might be a good resource to share. Um, yes. Okay. So, so, so the link for that is in my show notes, fiercevalley.com forward slash one, two, seven. Go fill it out. If you've had surgery, someone you know has had surgery and you've got something to say about it, as in my, someone had it and they died or whatever, um, or if you're thinking about it, because I think that'd be useful too. That'd be useful too. Um, yeah, okay, so I've been thinking about this recently, ways I used to just dry uh, and disguise my fatness. I, I had, I've spoken about it before, like a hundred episodes ago, briefly, and it's been, I've been thinking about it recently and it's kind of, you know, with love and compassion towards my uh, previous Vinny, who would do these things and some of the things that were really funny and and, and the reason, but you know, I'm, I'm like, laughing about it but obviously the reason behind why I would try to disguise my fatness in the past was because of the heartbreaking reality of living in a fat body in this society. I just had a, a swig of my tea. Don't you hate it when you have made a beautiful cup of tea and you're like oh I'm gonna fucking drink the shit out of it and then you forget about it and you go and sip it and it's cold. That's what's just happened to me. Although I knew that this this was cold because I made it like two hours ago. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> so being young and super insecure and being fat, I used to think that I could disguise the fact that I was fat with visual illusions, trickery of the eyes and magic techniques but <laughs> I wasn't fooling anyone. I don't think, I don't think, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe people saw me do the things that I am gonna tell you that I did and, and they were like, whoa, what happened to them? They used to be so fat. Now they're really thin. I don't know, maybe, maybe it did a little bit. Maybe it felt me, it helped me, help helped me feel better, which, you know, whatever. If it helped me feel better, then good for good for me for coming up with a solution so that I could live life. And, um, but my, sometimes, you know, the, 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 it's kind of like when you're younger, some of the things that you think um, are just, just silly, right? Like I was reading this meme of someone saying, uh, what's the silliest thing that you used to believe as a child? And they said, I used to believe that any time I turned the radio on, whoever was singing the song was singing it live in the radio studio. And it's like, <laughs> like yeah, what are those things? And I think this kind of falls into my 
be younger self not quite you know buying into beliefs that weren't i don't know based in reality uh and it was kind of like have you ever seen if you're if you're uh, not british you might not know this reference but darren brown brown on channel four who was a i don't know if you called him a if he calls himself like an illusionist or he doesn't call himself a magician he says like this is like i'm 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 you know this is like i'm tricking you in some way i'm, I'm influencing you in some way um he must be around still i wonder if he's done any good shows recently british people are probably like oh it turned out that he was an abuser or something because you know <laughs> uh, some of these he's called a mentalist and illusionist painter and author um he started with his television de debut, Darren Brown, Mind Control, in 2000. Yeah, he was good. Um, well, doesn't look like he's turned out to be a creep, but he probably is. Who knows? Anyway, um, he would, like, trick people and, uh, you know, get things like, oh, um, influence people to do things that they would never normally do. Like, there was one episode where it was, like, he convinced people to rob a... Uh, a truck w for, that had money and he did like loads of stuff to, to kind of get them they didn't know that they were going to do it they were just walking down the street a truck stopped in front of them and they just robbed it and then afterwards he, he was like why did you do that and he, they were like I don't know uh, yeah so a mentalist an illusionist is what I was uh, what I was <laughs> aiming for by doing this stuff so first thing um, that I used to do was and I wonder how much of this stuff is is you've done as well. Some of this stuff is a bit weird, so I doubt that anyone else did it, but uh, some of them stuff is pretty, I think other people might have. And the first thing I would do is I would buy clothes in sizes that were too small, even though they were like really, really tight on me, just in case the label was to stick out of the back, you know, and someone would see it and see the label that says medium and be like, oh my God, Vinny is so teeny tiny and medium. I thought that they were fat as fuck. Turns out they're wearing a medium. And you know, it'd be like a medium that I would have stretched to, um, <laughs> I would sit in whatever top that I had bought that I had bought deliberately too small and sit for hours with two pillows stuffed up the top to try and stretch it so that it would you know not be cutting my body in half by how tight it was but for hours walking around with two pillows in in in, in for the off chance that someone might see the label. And do you remember, I don't know, you might you, you st still even, might even be there of the label being such a powerful thing of what if someone sees my label and sees the size? And I haven't thought about a label apart from today in so long. And the only reason I thought about a label because I'm, I'm uh, my underwear is quite small today and there was a label from my trousers scratching my skin and I thought about the label, but... Um, I haven't thought about people seeing the size label on my clothes in a long time, but that used to be a big part of my life was clothing labels. And I'm so glad that, um, you know, because then if I did buy clothes that fit, then you have bet your fucking ass I'm going to cut that label out because I don't want to see it, anyone seeing that I'm wearing, um, you know, a 3X or whatever when, when I was younger. Um, I'd be cutting that out and like burning it. <laughs> no evidence of the fact that I'm fat um but you know people have eyeballs and they could they could tell but uh yeah that would be very very kind of yeah get that get that label out and now i'm so pleased i don't you know why because um sometimes you wear something and you're like oh this is great i really like it and you look at the label and you're like oh where was it from what size was it i don't know what size i am at this store because i cut the label out now i never have that there it is right there label just hanging around and I don't care if it sticks out <laughs> so uh, I used to always I, when I was, I was a teenager I thought that having big feet would balance my body out in some ways and I, I already have big feet so I have UK size 8 US size 10 
um, and they're very wide. So at roller skating, I'm going roller skating tonight, I wear a size 12, so 10 men's. That's how wide my feet are. And so I was like, whew, glad that I've got big feet. It's gonna balance out my fatness. And so I would then go to, I remember buying a pair of Reebok Classics, two sizes too big, and proudly wearing them around school. They were flopping around like clown shoes, thinking that people would be like, oh my God, look at this illusion. Oh my God, they used to be so fat. Now look at the size of their shoes. They are a double zero. Uh, <laughs> who knows, maybe that did happen. I think more likely is that people were probably like, what the fuck are you wearing your brother's trainers? <laughs> but that was only when I was a teenager because when I got a little bit older, so maybe like 20 years old, I decided that big feet were not actually a good idea because big feet meant that I had a big body. So I wanted to have small feet. So I would do the opposite. I would be buying shoes that were smaller to try and, you know, cram my feet in so that when men looked at my feet, they'd be like, ooh, so petite and dainty. Look at you. If your feet are small, you can't possibly fat be fat. Wow. <laughs> Wow, look at them. Uh, oh, my my Lord, the amount of times oh, my feet have been in pain. But I mean, how would they know? How was I, I, you know what it is, is because you know, if you go into someone's house and you take your shoes off at the door, sometimes the, the shoe size is in the bottom thing. Some, if someone saw that it was a size eight in the UK, size 10 in the US, I would have been like, oh God, mortified. And it's like all of these things on the off chance, who's inspecting shoe sizes of their guests who've taken their shoes off at the door? I don't know, in my world, in my world when I was young, I would, you know, just on the off chance, I will then be in terrible pain wearing these smaller shoes. Um, very logical. <laughs> Um, I would eat with a teaspoon instead of a normal size spoon so that the food that I was eating would look smaller and it would look like I was not eating a lot because I was taking teeny tiny bites because I'm so delicate and I'm not fat at all and I don't eat food. So everything would be small spoon. Everything. <laughs> Oh God, spaghetti bolognese, teaspoon, <laughs> okay now, soup, teaspoon, my goodness, uh, now, I'll be, now I eat with a fucking ladle, I eat with a serving spoon, oh, I, oh, that'd be a good idea, I don't, I just eat with a normal size spoon, but that would be pretty good, wouldn't it, it would be like, um, have you seen that meme where it's, uh, someone's in the gym, and they've, they've, ta they've got a Hershey's chocolate sauce bottle, that they've put water in and they're drinking out of it and it looks really funny. Like that, go into like a restaurant and bring out your own like ladle or something, especially if it was like an all you can eat place, that would be pretty funny, wouldn't it? Um, and of course I would do all the normal visual trickery, like not wearing stripes or um, wearing stuff that would cover my bum or, um, you know, wearing black and all that type of stuff because you know that's just you know standard obviously it's just so funny like I, I just think about it you know these rules that we have of don't wear horizontal stripes because then it's going to make you look bigger um I'm like really really is it really it really <laughs> really how I really I mean I don't look at people wearing I don't, it doesn't even register in my mind. Maybe it does in other people's, I don't know. Of like, oh, there's a person wearing horizontal stripes. Oh God, now they look fat. Like, or, oh, there's someone who's not wearing black and they're fat. Oh God, now I recognize that they're fat. And whereas before, if they wore black clothes, I would have thought that they were thin. Like, <laughs> I don't know. And I, and of course, it's about like not drawing attention to yourself and all that type of stuff. But I don't, 
these stupid rules, these silly rules that, you know, I guess some stylist made up in the 70s or whatever, you know, like don't wear tweed with 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 this material and don't do that and wear your cufflings like that and all, you know, it's just it feels very arbitrary, right? Because it's just, just made up. I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. Is it true? I don't think it's true. Um, and of course, I would squeeze my body into Spanx and buy Spanx that were the wrong size. Do you Have you done this? Do you do this? Don't buy Spanx that would fit and not kill you. Although it's probably still very squeezing. But I would buy Spanx that was so... Oh, so small. I can, I literally have memories of how tight they would be on my rib cage until I pulled them up over and so that they, they sat under my boobs and then, and then that was it. Like that's, that's your, that's your breathing done for the day. You, <laughs> when you ain't going to be breathing anymore, uh, never mind moving or eating or drinking because they were so tight. They had become basically sucked into your stomach wall lining that's how small they were um and yeah i just i i think about this you know why is it why is it when we look at fat bodies who have spanks on or whatever controlling underwear and their fat is is still there but it's 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 moved and sculpted in a certain way why is that better than just no Spanx and just the body just being there you know it's like what why like, people are like well, it just is it just looks better but well, d- does it does it i don't know i think that that's just, that's another kind of made up thing social construct why is it that the big tits like you wouldn't think generally speaking and this doesn't go for everyone with tits but generally speaking um you wouldn't be like i need to smooth out my tits to make them look less round and tit like would you generally speaking obviously there's lots of people who would be like yes i do need to you know for various different reasons but you know society doesn't say that that's what i'm saying society doesn't say Oh, God, you know, you haven't shaped out those unsightly round tits. And then why, so why, you know, because patriarchy has said, tits, yeah, that's sexy. We've decided they're sexy. Move four inches around to your back. Back rolls, ugh, no, gross. Ugh, oh, how can you go out with back rolls? Ugh. Show us your cleavage. Yes, please. Wear a backless dress. Oh, gross. Like, <laughs> and, what? and it's like, you know, a few inches away. And it's still the human body. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make, make it make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's just so made up. So why is it like, you know, a roll would look better if it was transformed into more of a sausage shape versus a croissant undulating shape why is it that we want to see like i think about in nature like a concrete slab versus a beautiful hill or a rolling wave versus the sand and like you know the sand is beautiful and the rolling wave is beautiful and and but why are we saying flat sand is is where it's at and a rolling wave is ugly because it's we wouldn't think about that about nature would we you would just be like it's different it's cool we like it all you know so yeah that's what i think about when i think about spanks like i 1000 percent get it and if it helps you feel okay to go out then fucking wear that shit if that's okay with you do do it do what you want and there's lots of reasons people might be wearing um shape um underwear or whatever whatever do you do you i'm just it's just curiosity in my mind um of why 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 what 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 what, you know we know why (laughs) fat phobia right um but it just seems so arbitrary doesn't it 
Now, when you think about it, isn't it arbitrary? Isn't it silly? You know? Like, I saw this surgery. You know, I'm, you know I love watching this fucking dirty shit on, on uh, YouTube. You know, like, ingrown toenails and corn removal and, um, you know, extracting dead spiders out of ear canals. All that type of stuff. Anyway, um, I saw this one where it was kind of like um, surgery on someone's foot. Oh, interesting. Want to see. And I was like, okay, what's this surgery? It was surgery to make this guy's toes ever so slightly shorter. One of one or two of them. Because apparently they were too long and it made them unsightly. They were not too long. I looked at his toes and I looked at my toes and I was like, well, shit, my toes are the same, <laughs> the same fucking thing. Hang on a minute. Is this a new beauty ideal where we have to have toes that are these ones be short, these ones be, be longer. And it has nothing to do with, it. and I was like, and there must be a medical reason, right? Because who the fuck would have foot surgery where they are removing uh, the length of his toe just for fun? And he was doing it just for fun, <laughs> just because he wanted to have his toes and it was millimeters. It wasn't like, oh, well now that's a sexy toe. It was just his toe, like three millimeters shorter. Bizarre. Like, what? What is going on? What is going on with the world? And so, yeah, like we think about that. Like, what? That, and I'll, you know, you can say that's silly. Why would why would he put himself in pain and probably cost money? Right? Obviously, you're not going to just get that on the on the NHS. You know, toe. Uh, unless you've got something wrong with your toes anyway and so it's just really it's just arbitrary but then again if we lived in a world where everyone was like oh look at these sexy new toes and oh my god you know when you're talking about the dream guy that you want to uh date and you're like tall dark and and short toes oh it really does it for me oh it's fucking stubby toes oh look at them toes oh how big his toes girl oh they're short mm, love it like, if we lived in a society like that, then I, I would get it. So, you know, all this stuff. Don't feel bad if you're doing any of this stuff. You know, I doubt people are eating with small spoons, but, you know, or wearing clown shoes. <laughs> Whatever, even if you are, don't feel bad for doing this stuff. Um, so a big part of, of this stuff, too, was obviously about being f hyper-feminine. Hyper-feminine. So the kind of, like... If I'm feminine, that makes up for my fatness. You know, like the whole, I'm so dainty. And, you know, fatness isn't dainty. Therefore, femininity is dainty. Therefore, align with femininity and you'll appear less fat. Um, and I wanted to, to maintain this feminine image at time, at all times, to great detriment to myself a, a lot of times. Um... Oh, like, you know, wearing high heels. What? Have you ever worn high heels? They fucking suck. Who has ever worn high heels and said, this is a great experience? I mean, who are those people? <laughs> what What have they done to their... What What is happening? Like, because I don't think anyone has, has worn high heels and been like, this is my preferred comfortable shoe, you know? No one's walk, walking up my, mountains wearing a, a fucking Malone, Malone, Malone Blahnik? Malone, Manolo? Manolo, Manolo Blahnik. Or a Louboutin. Are they? No. Because they're uncomfortable. They're <laughs> uncomfortable. Um, but that didn't matter to me because, of course, I had a job and it meant that I had to wear high heels. In my brain, they, I don't think there was any rules about wearing high heels, but... In my brain, you know, have to wear high heels, look as sexy as possible. Um, and I just remember many times being miserable because of the pencil suit, pencil skirt suit that I was wearing, made from tweed, had no stretch, um, my high heels. 
my uh you know my hair that was done and i can't get it wet and when i first came to vancouver i was working for a recruitment agency i'd be going out and visiting clients all the time around the vancouver area i didn't have a car i was getting on the bus and i'd be bringing client gifts and like boxes of donuts and things like that all on the bus and a lot of these clients were in industrial parks where i had to get two even three buses to get to them and um, all while teetering on <laughs> high heels with my pencil skirt suit, which actually did look really nice. It was really nice. Had like this like frilly thing on the bottom, that flouncy thing, anyway, whatever. Um, and uh, it would then be like, if it was raining, walking in high heels, skirt suit, box of donuts, handbag, um, literature on the company and an umbrella walking through industrial estates i don't know if you've been in a lot of industrial estates most of them don't have sidewalks because every motherfucker drives to them because who's gonna get the bus uh because they're so far away some people do and i was one of those one of those people and they're arriving to the clients just being like oh, hi you know, and being drenched and freezing and soaking. And one time I remember having to like walk through mud and getting to the clients and him being like, oh, you're, you're wet. And uh, he's like, oh, you must have like got wet walking from your car. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Walking from my car, not walking 15 minutes from the bus stop after getting 17 buses, after carrying <laughs> all of these things. And uh, this one time having like two different client meetings and having to get lots of buses and then just being miserable, it was feet soaked, blisters and getting to, I had to get, had to get two buses to get home and getting, getting off the, fir the first bus to get to the second bus and the second bus was just there and it was parked, lights off, um, but would open the doors when people would come. Uh, presumed it was going to be waiting there so I, I casually strolled up to it um maybe took 12 seconds and the guy uh saw me coming uh turned on the lights turned on the engine and just drove off while I was like don't go I just burst out into to tears because I was just so done with it because then it meant I had to walk home because because the buses were not frequent from that area so I had to walk <laughs> walk home with all of this shit like fucking hell it was awful. It was awful. Anyway, so it's like, that was like a great detriment to me. I could have just put on a pair of trainers. Why the fuck didn't I? I don't know. I guess I couldn't hand them in my, uh, hide them in my, in my handbag. Um, yeah, so, oh, it's like such a traumatizing story. I just remember it so clearly. Uh, yeah, and like things like, you know, wanting to appear, appear small and feminine. Like, uh, I remember kissing a guy who was a couple of inches shorter than me don't know if you've ever done this contorting my body to try and make me look shorter so when he was kissing me I'd be like contorting my waist so that my body would go into a you know I'd be a shorter height by three centimeters or whatever so he'd be like oh my god they're so short therefore they're feminine therefore they're not fat uh yes I would also behave in ways to try and make up for my fatness so things like uh eagerly sucking men's smelly dicks which they hadn't washed in 14 days to prove that even though I was fat I was willing and eager don't mind the smegma I'm gonna gobble it up oh disgusting <laughs> so gross uh and of course never ever expecting anything back from them no of course not don't be silly um, and doing things like not speaking up for myself or putting up with really shit friends and, and relationships and, uh, shit bosses. Oh my goodness. Uh, and looking back now, like some of those things are pretty hilarious, but at the time I was doing my best, right? Poor Vinny. <laughs> Poor Vinny. And the reason, of course, I was engaging in that magical thinking of if I do this and this will happen is, is... Uh, you know, and trying to be the next David Copperfield, um, hiding my fatness is because being fat was, is uh, very difficult and painful in this world. Um, so if I could get a little bit of uh, relief by eating with a teaspoon and 
never drinking from a pint glass because a pint glass was uh, too masculine for a dainty, dainty little thing like me. I'd have, I'd have a cocktail or a glass of wine, even though I hate wine. Um, yeah, so uh, it makes sense. It makes sense that we would do this because of the world. Um, but the reality, the reality, the reality is, of course, it's okay to be fat. In fact, I think it's super cool. I think being fat is like we're in this club of really cool counterculture people and um it's unique and fun and yeah and there's lots of fat joy and and we don't see this right like obviously when we're we're young we see fatness as this thing that's going to destroy our lives it means that we're never going to have sex with anyone or be loved or or be romanced or be happy or or any of that basically we have we've got no life ahead of us because of the fat or because of fatness and that's because that's a message that society presented to us but what if we had been presented with fat joy and of course there were probably moments where we saw fat joy and we saw fatness as a either neutral thing or a positive thing but you know that was probably one out of the ever every 10,000 messages that we got that fatness was this life ending condition that we needed to convince others of our humanity um yeah so so maybe now you know now i'm i'm 37 i i, I you know i can be fat joy for other people to see younger people for to see and be like oh that's what fat joy looks like maybe if i am fat maybe i i don't i i can have a life you know <laughs> maybe i can be happy and be loved and accepted and 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 also the world is shit but you know it's not because of my fatness that i'm bad but you know the world is it's the world's perception of my fatness <sighs> oh s silly 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 little Vinny. Well, another thing i used to do is do you remember when um do you remember when it was like i was like a rocker when i was a kid and i wanted you know when it was really fashionable to have a long belt baggy jeans and a long belt the longer the belt that's hanging out from your hoodie the better i couldn't find any belt to fit me never mind a belt that had extra length and so I would take a belt and just put it through like two loops, not do it up. And so the belt was just literally hanging off a couple of loops. And then it'd be like this long belt that's just hanging down. The belt was not doing any belt duties. It was just hanging there. So people, so people would think that my waist was so tiny, the longer the, the dangly bit of the belt, the tinier the waist. So people would be like, oh, tiny waist look at the tiny waist look how long my belt is it's touching the floor they must be teeny tiny um yeah also because because i was poor i uh, made myself a belt out of a washing line yes a washing line and i put some beads on it and i was very very proud of it went to the clubs i went to the clubs with human adults and showed off my belt that i had made out of a washing line a washing line like the line the line that you use to hang clothes <laughs> i remember even and i was genuinely proud of it i remember even and it wasn't that oh you know it actually looked really good but people were being classist no it looked fucking shit it looked like a washing line i remember going up to some like guy that i wanted to get with and being like so do you like my belt and him like inspecting it being like is that a washing line and me being like yeah it's pretty calm it? and then him saying no <laughs> and me being like what and i doubted myself then i doubted myself and was like oh maybe it's not cool 
And actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind. It was cool. You were you were rocking it. You looked so amazing, Vinny. <laughs> oh my god! I also had a Gap hoodie, which was it was so expensive. I remember even at the time it was like forty six pound or something. Am I right? Like it's so expensive. I I kept the price tag because I was like, I made um, thirty pound a week working in a bakery part time and it was a week and a half's wages to buy this gap hoodie because everyone was wearing gap hoodies and I and, and obviously it was something that would fit me because it, it came in man sizes right and I would wear this gap hoodie and I had stickers over the GAP um, and the stickers read greasy and proud greasy and proud what the fuck was I thinking? And this was my method to try and pull boys. I'm like, yeah, man, do you not my fucking, you know, statement about being great there? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Can you imagine if, can you imagine if you saw some teenager now with... <laughs> With a gap hoodie with stickers over the GAP saying greasy and proud. You'd be like, what the fuck is that? What do you mean greasy and proud? And it wasn't like I was greasy. I wasn't a greasy, but I wasn't, that, that wasn't a trait of mine being greasy. But, but apparently I wanted to people, why? Why did I want people to think that I was greasy and proud about it? I don't know. Not that, you know, if you are greasy, go for it. But I just, what? <laughs> I'm going to change my Instagram bio to greasy and proud. Greasy and proud. What a ding dong. Oh, <laughs> Me, greasy and proud, uh, the washing line bell, and then clown Reebok classics, down at the club, desperate to pull any boy <laughs> with probably like shit pickup lines oh my goodness i would ha i had a pair of like toy handcuffs and i would handcuff i remember handcuffing a boy that i made out with and was like <laughs> you're gonna have to stay with me all night now um <laughs> like what <laughs> talk about creepy um oh anyway Sending love to teenage Vinny. Sending love to your teenage self. Whatever you did. If you did anything um, silly, I'd love to hear. Tell me, to send me an email. Tell me about it. Uh, give, me a, give me a laugh. Give me a laugh. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out today. Um, if you want to fill out the survey about the, if you've had stomach surgery, Go to the link in the bio, 127, fearsfatty.com forward slash 127 or forward slash podcast. And and if you're feeling like it and uh, you enjoy the show, if you want to make a review on iTunes, not iTunes, iTunes, then I will be very happy. It would make me so happy. And it will help other people find the show. Um, so that more than my mum listens to it, even though she doesn't listen to it, rude. Okay, so see you next week in a while, alligator. Stay fierce, fatty. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the episode. And if you feel ready to get serious about this work and want to know when the doors open to Fierce Fatty Academy, which is my signature program where I teach all about how to overcome your fat phobic beliefs and learn to love your fat body, then go to fiercefatty.com forward slash waitlist. Again, that is fiercefatty.com forward slash waitlist to get your name on the waitlist for when Fierce Fatty Academy, my signature program, opens. 